Hello, everyone, and welcome to the return of Aviary Attorney. Uh, I am your your big chicken in charge. I don't think you're a chicken. I guess I'm JJ Falcon. It literally says it in my name, but you know. <laughs> and who are you? What uh, you got this shirt you're you're rocking today? The birds work for the bourgeoisies, which is what this game is about. I hope y'all did your homework on YouTube. I posted a ho I worked real hard on a highlight reel for two parts that we did back in the day four years ago. And apparently, as I, I hope you didn't do your homework on the Twitch channel. I hope you didn't do your homework too good, because apparently, we had a third episode that we did, uh, which we discovered when we went to our save file and was like, oh, what's all these days? We don't remember doing these. Well, apparently, there were two more hours that we did that are still buried on the Twitch channel that never made it to YouTube or my memory. So... I mean, I, we're just going to redo these. I, I have no memory of this place, Marison. <laughs> how, how ill were you by the time that we did this? Oh, this was after that. But I was, <laughs> I was delirious because this was, this was about four weeks before Detroit Evolution came out. And I, I didn't make no memories during that time. <laughs> I was sleep deprived and sleepwalking. That's what that was. So I have no memory of this at all. But we're going to start right here on January the 18th, the day after the first trial session of Prince Juan. If you didn't know, if you didn't do your homework, and you didn't have eight minutes to spare for a highlight reel of the previous cases that we did, uh, basically there is a, a Spanish prince from Spain, as one is, being Spanish, uh, who, is a, who is a fox. Prince Juan the fox. He's a, he's a, he's a fox. And uh, he came to Paris. We're in Paris in 1848 in this strange animal world where there's statues of people for some reason. And, uh, and he was accused of murder. He, gave, he tried to give the king a rose. The, the major of the king's army took the rose, pricked his hand on the rose, and fell over dead. Uh, but there's a lot of other evidence to suggest that that's not quite what happened. There's also a lot of evidence to suggest that our client is not actually the Prince of Spain. Which like a picture of the Prince of Spain, like like such as a picture of him, which is it's, not is not a fox well, man. And also, there's no Prince Juan. Librarian was like, that guy doesn't exist, and we we're like, well, we don't got the internet, we don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> time to bust out the lawyer skills, says Peanut Bean. Indeed, we are we are Paris finest. Uh, and you know, if you're wondering why I sound like Foghorn Leghorn, well, you'll see a picture of me. I'm a I'm a big I'm a big falcon, but more importantly, I'm chicken in, hawk. I'm a chicken hawk. I'm more, <laughs> more importantly, we are in uh, we are in 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 1800s Paris, and I was like, you know, I want to sound half a Luton, but I'm not gonna do a French accent for hours. That's not gonna happen. You're gonna see me do it a little bit with some of the ladies, and it's real bad. Uh, so I was like, you know, this this sounds proper. This this is what. A southern hick like me sounds he is as proper and and Sparison's just a little guy like that's that you're just a funky little guy that's that's your accent yes and for the record mm -hmm. these voices were chosen before <laughs> LeBlanc became a person yeah no we, we I sound like I'm ripping off Benoit Blanc I swear to god I did it first I mean, I'd have to look at the dates. Knives Out might have been the end of 2019. I, <laughs> I think it was the end of 2019. I might have not done it first. I think you did it first. Uh, we'll, we'll go with that. We'll see. No <laughs> no jury would convict you. <laughs> <laughs> Vienna Vampire got a cocktail out. I mean, it's 5, it's 5 or 6 p.m. for them, so that's not, that's not silly. It's noon for us. That'd be a little early for a cocktail. But, but it was a pun. It was a, it was a pun. I appreciate the pun. All right. Uh, and just let me know if that game audio is a little bit a, a little bit high, y'all. I mean, it it shouldn't be too high. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna move it up a little. It should. It, there's not a lot of game audio in this. There's no voice acting or nothing. Hence us talking like this nonsense. Uh, <laughs> but there there is a little bit of there's a little bit of music in the background. Fills fills in the silence. We just don't want it to be too loud. Sometimes the music gets a little loud during the trials because they they turn on the trial music like Phoenix, right? I don't know where to go. So last we, <laughs> so last we suspected, we got three days. A trial resumes. We got three more days to collect evidence to figure out if Prince Juan was uh, was who he said he is, and also to figure out who actually killed the dog. Because we're gonna, 
I still think it was our client, quite frankly, but we gotta we gotta make a case that it might have been somebody else. Or he should not have eaten chocolate. There is the chocolate. There is the chocolate. Uh, we could go revisit our Belgian elephant friend who runs the chocolate shop and see if we can't guess more people who might have bought the chocolate that may or may not have been poisoned. That might have been the alternative uh, murder weapon. I don't know why I keep looking at my microphone like it's the camera. Finally, I realize that the camera is, is over here. <laughs> it's really big and black. I just keep staring at it like it's staring me back. <laughs> All right, so we got the chocolate emporium. I... This is the bar. We could do some more blackjack and get some more money, but I don't think we need that right now. This is the prison. Mm -hmm. We could go talk to Prince Juan again and confront him about the fact that he's not Prince Juan. The conciergerie. I don't know if we should tell him that we know that. I don't know if that's helpful. This was the uh, the scene of the crime. I don't think there's anything else. I think we've gone there twice. I don't think there's anything else to see at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Vienna Vampire says if Zootopia taught me anything, it's always the sheep. Well, it was definitely our client the first time. It was definitely our client the first time, so we're a little touchy. We're a little, we're a little touchy about this. We just, we're just, we also defense attorneys, so... I mean, not to stereotype, but I do think there is a predication for our clients being guilty. <laughs> wolf in sheep's clothing is more than a warden. I mean, I think it's just a wolf in Spanish clothing, as far as I can tell. So this is, we don't need to go back to the library. We, we found all we need to find over there. This is the court. We don't need to go back to court. Uh, this is where Mousy was. So Mousy's the guy who hired us. And I believe he is partnered with Saint, with, 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 uh, with Prince Juan. I believe Prince Juan is a lawyer who's pretended to be Prince Juan. And that this is, or a private investigator pretended to be Prince Juan. I believe that he is the R and R and M associates. And then this is, uh, oh, this is our house. We don't need to go home. I'm gonna go with Chocolate Emporium and we, we'll, we'll just see what we can do here. Oh, well, you get to be Belgium again. Welcome back, messieurs. Ah, uh, have you finally decided to sample my fine chocolate? You know, it's a lot harder when you don't have a Belgian boss anymore it to is, listen to every is, day. This is very true. <laughs> Or perhaps you have just returned to ask more questions. Uh, Timmy Silver's asking, are the options with the clocks only available for a limited time? I never quite figured that out, to be honest with you. I think it has something to do with that, but I'm not sure. The clocks definitely take time. Sometimes there's exclamation points which don't take time. Yes, those are, those are cinematics. It's just the questions today, I'm afraid. Could the chocolate have been poison? Uh, who bought this piece of chocolate? We, we need to figure this out first. Let me think. Who to ask about? All right. So we've already we've already asked about uh we've already asked about Mousy, and he was like, no, I'm mice terrify me. I would never have sold to a mouse because I'm an elephant. <laughs> we uh there were two other people we asked about. I just edited this yesterday. How do I have no memory of this place? I didn't ask about the girl, the swan girl, the flower seller. She's a little suspicious. I don't think he sold it to himself. Oh, we got Judge Romulus. He's on here now. Well, that's interesting. I think it might have been either Romulus, because Romulus is involved in something. We've met a lot of people since the last time we were here at this chocolate shop, Sparrison. We met these fellas at the bar who were playing blackjack. We met the hunter guy who didn't know what a vet was. We met his parrot friend. We, uh, we met Judge Romulus. Yeah, for some reason, the normal judge has been replaced by a wolf. I don't know quite what that is about. He seems a little suspicious, though. And then this is the librarian. The real quiet ASMR librarian. Ha <laughs> he's an arrogant ass. An arrogant ass, indeed. Uh, guilt by species adjacency. There was a goat among the pictures who was almost a sheep. Sh case closed. That goat was a was a was a kleptomaniac. I remember. Uh, what's the one in the bottom middle? The bottom middle. That was major. Ha oh, that was he... the, oh, that was a dead guy. We already asked about him last time. He dead. We asked about the dead guy last time because that seemed pretty case closed. Mejor how well. Mejor how. Well. <laughs> I think we might have asked about our client. I think we might have asked about Juan Quiero just to see if you know maybe our, our client asked, maybe the dead guy asked. Uh, we did, did the kind of the obvious things before. Uh, he doesn't. We, did we show a picture or something? We're, we're asking. We, we're showing them pictures. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, now this is this is, she was a uh, she was from the first case. She was a kleptomaniac. I think uh, it's probably from one from from this case. I don't believe it's the lady who owns the tavern. I think could be just could be could be the cop. Could be could be Mr. Cop who is not very good at being a cop. Rabino? Not Rabino. No, 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 he's he's just he's just making a living being a groundskeeper now that we ruined his photography career. Uh, okay, so I'm thinking I'm thinking Romulus, Swan Lady, and and maybe in- Inspector Valerity. I think we might get three options. So I'm gonna start with Judge uh, yeah. Judge Romulus because he wasn't here last time. So maybe what maybe- is this guy's problem? There's something up about him. <laughs> Have you ever served a hairy wolf in judicial robes named Judge Romulus? Yes, Monsieur. All right, have you ever served- Wait, did you just say yes? Yes, Monsieur. <laughs> a wolf in judicial robes did serve a person like that a little while ago, on the 6th of January, to be precise. He was a January oh, 6th- <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no, that's not good that he- Where were you on January 6th, Judge Romulus? <laughs> Did he say or do anything suspicious on January the 6th? Not that I recall, Monsieur. He was a pleasant fellow. Big toothy grin. Oh no. Bought 200 grams of tra- classic dark Belgian chocolate with custom filling. I- 200 grams seems like a lot. That's- that's quite a lot, isn't it? Two kilos. No. No, no. Point two point, kilos. Point two kilos. <laughs> A custom, custom fill-in. Some type of caramel. Caramel. (laughs) Caramel. What What does that mean, Falcon? Well, we shouldn't make assumptions. It may just mean that this judge liked to eat chocolate on January 6th. (laughs) But if the judge's purchase is related to the rapper at the crime scene, then... Monsieur Hagelsack, do you think I could get a copy of Judge Romulus's receipt? I can do one better, Monsieur. I have the original, right here. I keep them for tax purposes, you understand. Is it okay for us to take it, Monsieur? Absolutely. Memorizing recipients' contents is trivial, after all. Receipts. <laughs> all right, we proved that Judge Romulus bought the chocolate. Would you look at that thing? Judge Romulus signed it in green ink. Green ink! I knew Judge Romulus was shady, but only a true villainous people write in green. Thank you very much for your time, Monsieur Hagelsack. You have been enormously helpful. I am glad to be of service. We'll shoot the best of luck with your case, Monsieur Regis. All right, if you happen to be from Belgium in the chat... I am sorry. <laughs> Good. Uh, so we got a new day. Uh, there's the tavern. Well, okay. So what is our other evidence? So we had we had the fact that the Don Quixote page that our client. Oh, well, maybe we should go to the jail and talk to Prince Juan because, I mean, we've we found out a lot of stuff about him since the last time we talked. We, we know that they came in from the other entrance, so the Kingfisher's testimony was not true. Yes, that witness that, that was on the stand who said that he saw Prince Juan doing the thing, he was lying, and we, we caught him in a lot last maybe, time. Maybe we could shake down the Kingfisher at the Palais de l'Urve. Oh, you think he's just hanging out over there? That's where he was before on the bridge. Pont, pont, pont. Ponche train? I don't know. I've been to Paris. What do I know? All right. If he fell off of the bridge, he would be insane. <laughs> Falcon and Sparrow then once again find themselves in the plastic carousel <laughs> just outside the Louvre. So, which exhibits are we exhibitions are we visiting today? All right. Uh, so, so, so he likes to, he likes to hang out over here, I think. Maybe we'll see him over here. Oh, no, we, so where we go next? uh, the Grand Galliari, are you? Maybe it's not, not yet. Pass me the map. The porcupine fellow left. Did you want to ask him something? 
Well, then in particular, I just wanted more details on this Renard Volpes, but I suppose we'll have to leave it for now. Maybe we'll run into uh, Roberto Rubino. Oh, it's Roberto Rubino, Monsieur. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, okay. that was that was not helpful. Yep. Yeah, no, we we wasted a whole day. <laughs> we wasted a whole day just going to the Louvre. Yeah, let's go. Good job, Sparrison. This was a this was a really good call. No, I didn't. I didn't. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, wait. Why, why can we only go home? It's Thursday. Thursday is office day. That doesn't make no sense. I'm feeling pretty confident <laughs> about this case. I'm not. <laughs> we didn't manage to work out who footprints one is hiding, but that's okay. I'm sure everything will go smoothly at the trial. We'll... We've still got one day, but how to spend it? I suppose we could revisit the Louvre. No. <laughs> or maybe we should just play some cards at the card on Chabot. Something wrong, Sparrison? You're being unusually quiet. Falcon, we need to talk. About what? About... What, what's up? See, I was doing some thinking. Dangerous thing to do, I know. Anyway, I realized we're missing some crucial evidence. <laughs> well, what evidence would that be? Well... We know that Major Hal consumed a piece of chocolate before he died, and we know that he died of poisoning. But we still aren't sure that the chocolate was the cause. Well, that's true. If we keep pushing the chocolate theory, Coco Rico will almost certainly bring that up. So I thought to myself, if one of us were to consume the wrapper itself, it may provide proof of whether it contains traces of poison. Well, sure, that could work, but it would be incredibly foolish. Incredibly. Wait, were you thinking of eating the wrap asparagus and you can't possibly want chocolate that bad? Maybe. Well, stop those thoughts right now. I'm not going to let you potentially kill yourself like that. You need to potentially do that in a different, more vanguard way. This is the French Revolution. Don't waste a good I, death. I knew you would say that. That's why I already consumed the wrapper. Oh, no. Boing! 45 minutes ago. Oh, no. Sparrison! Sp Sparrison, where'd you teleport to? Oh goodness. Oh goodness, this is no good. The infirmary. Doctor, is Sparrison okay? Oh, oh goodness. I, I, I do not have any idea what to give this stork. Uh, wait, wait, what's a fa fall red? Fall red? He, se he seems to be some kind of... God, he's got long, thin little fingers, doesn't he? Well, he is not conscious right now, but he is stable. I think it is safe to say that your friend is not on his deathbed. I'm terribly curious to know what voice we gave him originally and whether this was the same. <laughs> oh, thank God. Chicken God. How did Regular you God? say People God? this happened again? It's a long story, lawyer and occupational hazard. Doctor, can you tell me what poison caused this? I have no idea. But I have sent specialist who should be here tomorrow morning. He will make full assessment. Well, that's good to hear. Thanks, doctor. Take good care of him. Am I going to have to do this trial alone? Wait a moment. There is a matter of the bill. I think you got bill enough for the both of us, sir. We'll have to discuss it later. I have an important case to prepare for, and I'm one partner down. I see. Well, rest assured your friend is in good hand. Oh, goodness. I'm going to pace left and right. This is All terrible. Right. What the <laughs> hell was Sparrison thinking? I can't win a case like this. Compels me, though. <laughs> Did someone yeah, say something? I found you. Running around like a headless chicken. You're one tricky lawyer, you find. I don't know what voice it's supposed to be. <laughs> Who's speaking? I can't see you, Monsieur. Step forward. All right, I'll step forward. But it will be the last thing you ever see. Oh no, I'm gonna get. Am I gonna get shot? I broke the game. <laughs> Au revoir, JJ Falcon. Am I also now in the hospital? What just happened? Where am I? Am I dead? No, that can't be right. This is nighttime. I'm just sleeping. If I focus and count to three, I should be able to wake up. One, two. Oh, dear. 
Oh, did it work? Oh no, not this bitch again. Dame Cataline! I can't believe how easy you were to fool. I put on a cutesy voice, acted all innocent, and you ate the whole thing up. Oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up, I don't need to be lectured by a murderer. I'm the murderer. Why, Monsieur Falcon, it was your accusations that put Baron Rudiger on death row. It wasn't my fault. Hey, where are you going? And, and you are. Out of my way, Severin. I'm not done talking to Dame Cataline. It wasn't my fault. Is that the excuse you make after all your failures? Now, I'm not making excuses. Failure after failure after failure. No desire to improve yourself. You're a joke of a lawyer, JJ. Don't call me JJ. I'm Johannes John Jameson Johnson Beauregard Falcon to you. That's all you have to say? How pathetic. You don't even deserve to stand in your grandfather's shadow. My... my granddaddy. <laughs> I'll prove you wrong. I can do better. Oh, it's you, Sparrison. Have you come to berate me, too? What? No, no. I'm just here to tell you to wake up. Wake up, Monsieur. Wake up. Can you hear me? I said wake up! Are you out of the hospital now? Oh, no. We got court to go to. <laughs> That's not good. A new day. <laughs> the Pontes de Rades. A newly built bridge. But That's where I wanted to go the and last then, uh, time. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, it's forcing us. <laughs> All right, is this a kingfisher liar? I don't remember Kingfisher's voice. Uh, I think I gave I, I gave him a lotso voice. I gave him a speedy voice. Come on, sir, wake up. I said wake up. You're starting to worry me. Oh, thank goodness. I wasn't sure whether I would have to find a doctor or a mortician. Blah, oh, my head. Where am I? The Pont de Arts, you know, by the Louvre, in Paris, France. I just fished you out of the Seine. Nearly broke my rod doing it. Wait, I know you. You're that disrespectful lawyer guy. Juro Falcon or something. Uh, is it, what time is it actually? What day is it? Yeah, your head pretty bad, huh? It's the 21st of January and around 9 o'clock in the morning by my reckoning. 21st, 9 o'clock. Oh no, the trial! I should have been at the court diocesis 10 minutes ago. <laughs> well, if you're running late, but take it easy, monsieur. I'm sure they'll be understanding. Maybe if I sprint it. In your condition? That would be stupid. Take a seat. Clear your head. I'll go get some dry clothes. No time. I gotta go to the trial wet. <laughs> wait, monsieur. At least take this before you go. What's this? A dip pin? Oh no, wait. It's a modern fountain pin. Bone handle. Gold nib, this is very fancy. It's got the ink on the inside? Thanks, monsieur, but this isn't mine. Really? Are you sure? You were holding it pretty tightly when I found you. I was holding this? And I suppose it has to be mine <laughs> if it was in my hands. Fountain pen has been added to your evidence. What do you want to bet that's green ink? Thanks, fisherman, I owe you one. <laughs> hey, don't call me a fisherman. I'm not a man. I'm, I'm a... Fish, Fisher, person, person fishes, I think. king. <laughs> <laughs> it's nine o'clock. I believe it's time for the roll call. Nope. The defense is not present. Oh, such unprofessionalism. If there is no defense, then this trial cannot proceed any further. We must make a ruling based on the evidence that has already been presented. I will now converse with the jury. We shall decide whether Prince Juan is guilty of murdering Major Hal and conspiring to murder the king. Your Honor, may I have a word? Fine, but make it quick. I'm a firm believer that a trial must be orderly and punctual. There is no room for wishy-washy dilly-dallying, but it seems somewhat rash to end a trial session the moment it is due to start. Perhaps it would be prudent to wait five or ten minutes in case the defense is just a little tardy. Then the trial still has the chance to proceed and justice will be served. You are the prosecution, are you not? You have nothing to worry about. The guilty verdict is all but guaranteed. Your Honor, you appear confused. I 
I'm not here to secure a guilty verdict. Of course you are. You're the prosecutor. By definition, you're here to prosecute. That's a very uh, corrupt interpretation of my job. I am here in this courtroom to ensure that justice is served. An unfair and unbalanced trial is not in the spirit of justice. I was valedictorian. <laughs> <laughs> That's very noble of you, but if the defense is absent, then there is little that can be done. I hear no more of this matter. I will now talk with the jury. The d defense is present, your honor. Why are you wet? <laughs> You're late, Falcon. Mon do, JJ, you look like a total mess. Ugh, what happened to you? S something like that. Your Honor, we are all present. We are only three minutes over schedule. Let's not needlessly dirty the pure name of justice. Rules are rules. Prosecutor Falcon clearly has no respect for legal procedure. Frankly, turning up while looking like a drowned rat, I ought to hold him in contempt for- All court. right, that is offensive to rats. But Your Honor. Rules are rules. One more word out of either you and I shall have you both disbarred. We don't have any kind of bar. All right. It's a pity. The King of France was most looking forward to standing behind the witnessed podium. The... The King of France is here! Oh. <laughs> okay. Is he, is he also a penguin? He is indeed a penguin. You want to commit to this? I mean, you're yes. not Saracen. <laughs> oh, are we not doing the trial after all? That is a pity. Uh, your Majesty, what a surprise. Well, uh, well, you see. You know, it is my seventh time testifying against a would-be assassin. But it is the first time seeing a trial in case that has ended before it has even begun. Well, the defense, uh, he was late and, uh, oh, pish posh. France did not become a great dignified kingdom through rigorous punctuality. Let's go ahead with the trial. It will be fun. Look, I'll say the oath. Uh, I swear to me, uh, without hatred or fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Did I get it right? That was perfect, your majesty. JJ, I trust you have no objections with the king testifying? No, no objections here. Going ahead with this trial is fine with me, obviously. And surely you wouldn't stand in the way of the king, would you, your honor? Gah, fine. Proceed with this cursed trial. Excellent. Now, your majesty, could you tell us about your activities the day of the murder? My activities? Well... I started my day with tea and toast, and I normally do. I was dressed in my PJs at the time. I think you could skip ahead a little. Perhaps you don't. You your arrival the loop. Ah, right. Of course. We well, my entourage and I entered through the loop south entrance around nine o'clock. We passed through the Salle du Tulibri with little fanfare. At the Grand Galliere, I unveiled my new painting, uh, gave a short speech, and inspired the citizens who attended. That's when I approached by a man claiming to be Prince of Spain. He presented a rose which was taken by Major Howell, and well, I think you know the rest. Well, indeed we do, your majesty. Madames and messieurs of the court, what we have here is another testimony that establishes Prince Juan's guilt. And this is no ordinary testimony. It is the testimony of perhaps the most trustworthy man in all of France. Oh, you flattered me, prosecutor. But I am the trustworthiest in all the kingdom, aren't I? I have no doubts, your majesty. Nonetheless, I would like to perform a cross-examination. How dare you doubt your king, the other nerve? Oh, calm yourself, judge. I have no qualms with standard legal procedure. <laughs> Being a vampire is asking for kings allowed to testify in court? I mean... Defense, please proceed. I would like to see the courtroom drama material. All right. Okay, we entered through the Louvre South entrance around 9 o'clock. 
We passed through Sally de Tibre with a little fanfare, and the Grand Gallery I made a new painting, give a speech, and that's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. We know he ain't. <laughs> Spirits, and I know you're not here right now, but, uh, voice a vo voice in my head that talks in Sparison's voice. <laughs> what, what, should we, we pursue the fact that he's not really the Prince of Spain? Because that's implicating our own client. And, but we're trying to prove that it might have been somebody else who tried to kill the king, but we don't have any other suspect dependent on except for maybe Romulus himself, but he was not present. Frankly, my memory is very foggy of what got us to this point. <laughs> uh, we, we passed through the Sala de Tibre. I remember that was correct. South entrance. Yeah, I believe that was also correct. I'm curious about what might have happened in the Grand Gallery. Now, Your Majesty, I would like to act, ask about your activities in the Grand Gallery. Because there's a lot. This is where that guy died. Please proceed. Uh, did you see anyone suspicious? That's a good question. Aside from the Prince of Spain, <laughs> did you see anyone out of the ordinary in the Grand Gallery? Why, Monsieur, the Grand Gallery is always inhabited by artists. Everyone there is out of the ordinary. Nonetheless, can you think of anyone who might have stood out? Is this question going somewhere, JJ, or are you blindly stabbing in the dark? I'm stabbing that darkness. <gasps> this is this is a valid question. I believe I don't believe there's anything out of line here. This is a perfectly fine question. Please answer, Your Majesty. Who'd you see? Well, I don't know. I saw dozens of paintbrush wielding mustache toting weirdos. Okay, they're the Bohemians. They're not weirdos. Be specific. I I saw photographers, and sculptors, and sketches, and hipsters, so One of these things is not like the other. Just what do you want me to say, monsieur? Look what you've done, Jeta. You've stressed the poor king out. Badgering the king, tut tut. Absolutely disgusting behavior. You're starving, what a buffoon. Oh no, we lost favor with the jury. That's never happened before. No, I do not. Prince of Spain? I, I I don't know what else to do with this other nonsense. I believe... All right, Your Majesty, you said you were presented with a rose by the Prince of Spain. Indeed. He formally <laughs> introduced himself. I knew he was telling the truth because he called me Senor. <laughs> it's, 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 we are the defense. This is true that this was not the, man, the, the Prince of Spain. I mean, it is true. But at the same time, that's still kind of implicating our client. But you know what? We're not here to serve our client. We're here to serve the truth and justice. So I believe we do have the evidence in our folder, at least, that the man was not the Prince of Spain. I do not think this is going the way you think it is. <laughs> I, I, I do not think you can really tell that we have no memory of this playthrough. Uh... I believe that this would be Stalin. Why did Major Hal take the rose? I mean, I'd be a little curious about that. I hope we don't lose favor with the jury again. That would be... That would be very unfortunate. Let me check my case notes. <laughs> uh, no, we don't need to see a walkthrough. It will play how we play. I find it curious that Major Hal snatched that rose before you took it. Why did he do that? You got, you got, you got, you got a list. The Major has always been a protected fellow. He think he was just doing his diligence as royal guard. Good thing he did. And I would say he did a good job. Well, I can't argue with that. Okay, we didn't lose any favor with the jury, at least. Yes, I do have another, I do have another question. That man was not the Prince of Spain! Your Majesty, prosecutor, members of the court, praise yourselves because I have a revelation that will turn this trial on its head. Juan Car Carrito is not the Prince of Spain. That's not a revelation, Falcon. Isn't it? Of course not. We all know that the current ruler is Queen Regna and Isabella II and that she has no children. The Queridos are obviously pretenders to the throne. Prince Juan's title is probably self-appointed. <laughs> But his name ain't even Juan. <laughs> I don't even think the fox is Spanish. So what? So, so what? That's important. 
JJ, what's important is that this man is accused of committing murder and conspiring to kill the king. That's what's in dispute here. The man's name is irrelevant. He could be named Juan Carrito or Bob Struni for all I care. It doesn't change the events that just transpired on the morning of January the 6th. Where were you? I suppose that's true. I do not have another question about Prince Juan. Okay, at least I didn't lose favor with the jury again. Also, how is everybody but me understand this man has been lying this whole time? Didn't anybody want to tell JJ that this we all are in on the fact that he's not really the Prince of Spain? Maybe there's something to question about little fanfare. How, how is their little fanfare? All right. Mm. Your Majesty, you said you passed through the Salé du Tibri uneventfully. Indeed, we stopped briefly to look at the paintings, uh, and we moved to the Grand Gallery. What did you see? What about the other rooms? <laughs> There are several rooms, but you only mentioned that by name. Why is that? Cool, the salle du tibre was the only room we looked in around in detail. The other rooms we simply passed right through. Why'd you stop in that room specifically? Well, see, there's a giant door stop. Caught my eye. My eye. It sparked a debate. Say no more, your majesty. Maybe it's the south entrance. No, no, I see, I see. What, what, what did we see? What did you see? Can you elaborate? What did you see in there? What did I see? Well, Roman stuff. I mean, this is where mostly. the this is where the chocolate wrapper was put in the in the in the in the pot. So maybe they saw Romulus there. I mean, aside from the Roman artifacts, for example, did you talk to someone in the room who was not a member of your entourage? You're reaching, JJ. The king already testified that he passed through without encountering anything of interest. I want the king to elaborate. I have reason to believe this was a key moment on the day of the murder. I want the king to elaborate on exactly what and who he saw. Then I suppose you'll have to proceed, your majesty. All right. Let me think. There was giant doorstop, and there was copper urn thing. Oh! <laughs> there was something else. Now that you ask, I was offered a box of chocolates by some peasant mademoiselle. Oh, it's the swan lady. I don't think, uh, I don't have much of sweet tooth, but Major Hal was keen to accept a chocolate or two on my behalf. What? Hmm? Did they say something startling, prosecutor? No, please continue, your majesty. I think the prosecution is startled because he just came to the realization that I was not spouting drivel in the previous trial session about the poison chocolate. Well, that's debatable. To cut a long story short, your majesty, this mademoiselle may hold some relevance to the case at hand. Could you describe her? Really? She's relevant? Let me think. She was a swan. <laughs> a they, sorry looking swan. They look like uh, me, but with long neck. <laughs> I know what a swan looks like, your majesty. A young, sorry looking swan, you say. I don't suppose her name was... <laughs> Mademoiselle <laughs> Swanson. Dubic. Mademoiselle Signier. Signier. That sounds familiar. It's a swan name. Swan name Signier. Well, I see. That is undoubtedly significant. Mademoiselle Signier gave chocolates to Major Hal minutes before oh, he died. Oh, and the music that plays is Saint Saint Signier. <laughs> the, the music that follows her. Ah, uh, yes. Now, just one minute. I see what you are alluding to, JJ. You're suggesting that the gifted chocolates killed the major, but that line of reasoning holds no weight because the evidence is circumstantial. Circumstantial, my tail feathers. The king just testified the major how ate chocolate. Yes, that is no longer in dispute, but you have not proved that the chocolates were poisoned. Oh. Without that, we must assume that the swan was merely offering a gift rather than speculating that she is a murderer. Yes. Yes! Shame on you, defense, implicating poor innocent girls like that. Absolutely disgusting. Why I ought to end this trial? Hold on, I do have evidence that that chocolate was in fact poisoned. Ah. I don't believe you, JJ. If you had a piece of evidence that significant, you would have slammed it down already. Mm. Present it. 
Well, I haven't been given the multiple choice options yet. <laughs> it's not really evidence. Hold a type of evidence. Why am I not surprised? Uh, the drama is getting good. When, why do I go all of a sudden go quiet? Well, your majesty, it appears the defense just had a realization of his own. That is that he lacks the evidence to support his theory. Since he cannot continue with his argument, I believe the cross-examination has to come to an end. No, I am not done yet. Let me present my evidence. See, I had the chocolate wrapper back in my office, and Sparrison ate it. Stop, JJ. Stop while you have still a little dignity. The results of whatever crackpot pseudoscientific experiment you perform do not constitute valid evidence. This trial is over, Your Honor. About bloody time. You may take your leave, Your Majesty. Very well. I am pleased that uh, justice has been thoroughly served. Until next assassination attempt, adieu. Messieurs? Messieurs. <laughs> I will now deliberate with the jury. Objection! Objection! Oh! Sorry, I've always wanted to do that. Sparrison, are you okay? I am not. The doctor says I have an iron stomach. Most of the poison passed straight through me. Speaking of which, I would like to testify on the poisoned chocolate issue. I even have a doctor's note. See? It's too late. The trial is over. You can't be serious, Your Honor. The contents of that note could turn this entire trial on its head. You must allow it. Why are you constantly arguing with me? I thought your job of a public prosecutor was to assist the judges. I told you, Your Honor. My job isn't to get a guilty verdict. It is to ensure that justice is, is served. <laughs> stop, sa jump, stop saying the quiet part loud. <laughs> I swear, you're the worst prosecutor in all of France. Go ahead, Sparrison. Read the contents of that note for the court to hear. I would love to. Why Ahem. does it smell like something's burning in our house? Uh, maybe you're having a stroke. No, it smells like something's in the air fryer. Are you cooking something? I am not cooking in the air fryer. Maybe the fly got eaten. <laughs> I killed both flies that were flying around. This patient, Sparrison, was submitted to... Oh, God. Salpere <laughs> Hospital, where he displayed a variety of symptoms. These included profuse sweating, a rapid fever, and severe nausea. The patient was diagnosed with poisoning, as is, you know, the thing that happened. Probably originating from a plant of known as aconite, aka monkshood, aka Wolf of Zabane. Wolf of Zabane. That was mentioned last time. Wolf of Zabane. By, by the hunter. By the dog hunter. When we questioned the patient, he admitted to having consumed a discarded chocolate wrapper potentially carrying such poison. Examining the contents of the patient's stomach confirmed this to be true. Oh, oh. Ah, the wrapper is now submitted into evidence. Aha. Uh -huh. Should we click on it? Um... Yes. We got the chocolate receipt to show who. Yes. But the, the rapper. The rapper. Did, did you need to click on the evidence? Uh, did I accidentally do it? Did, did you? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we were bringing up evidence in the middle of your. your As a testimony. mental health professional, I believe this patient to be clinically. Ah, uh, well, let's let's skip that. Uh, yada yada yada. Okay, here we go. Signed, Doctor Farfalle. Thank you, Sparrow. And I don't think I'll even need to question you. Between your note and the king's testimony, every angle of the chocolate wrapper business has been covered. Awesome. Wait, did you say the king is here? You can get his autograph later. Right. So what happens now? Do I get cross-examined by the prosecution or something? To be honest, I see little to cross-examine. Do your damn job, prosecutor. Cross-examine the little annoying liar of a bird and the testimony to shreds. Your Honor, he has a note. <laughs> we can pick the details or delve into the doctor's credentials, but I fear it would be a waste of the court's time. Nobody wants that. They just want to go to So what the hell do we do now? Well, we do nothing, Your Honor. This poison wrapper has introduced an element of doubt into the case. The prosecution must accept that. But is the level of doubt reasonable? Is it significant? I think the members of the jury will agree. JJ's evidence is still tenuous. Tenuous. 
Step above circumstantial. You have proven a link, and not only a logical link, but you haven't proven beyond doubt that Major Kill Hal was killed by chocolate. You're still making far too many assumptions. Where is the empiricism? He ate that the whole part? chocolate bar. All I did was eat the wrapper. Oh, I brought along a witness. Maybe she can help. Uh, hello. You. Sparison, it's great to see you on your feet, and you have been an enormous asset, but what are you trying to pull off now? Surprise witness. Surprise witness? Yeah, I remember you mentioning that Kokoriko liked calling surprise witnesses, so I thought I would beat him at his own game, well, although she... he did bring the, the king of... I mean, he brought the king of France. You kind of can't beat that. And uh, I brought the flower girl. Okay, you're putting me in a difficult position, Sparison. Just a moment before we established that she is a suspect. What? <laughs> that can't be right. Sparison, it is okay. Monsieur Falcon, I would like to testify. You want to testify? Do you understand what you're agreeing to? I do. I have accepted my fate. Prosecutor, do you have any objections to me calling upon Mademoiselle Signe as a witness? None, none. Bearing in mind, of course, that you are here to defend Prince Juan, not convict Mademoiselle Signe. Prosecuting is my job. Of course. I, uh, yeah. I have no objections either. Please proceed, witness. Speak the oath. You're going to have to get these fruit snacks open for me. <laughs> the oath. The oath. Uh, 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 I swear, Your Honor, I swear to speak without hatred and, you know, we're just going to do Russian. Without fear and tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Your French always becomes Russian. Please state your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Catherine Marie Signet and I am a flower seller. <laughs> Mademoiselle Signet, tell the courtroom of your activities on the morning of the 7th of January. Very well. I saw the king and his entourage enter the Louvre around nine o'clock. I followed. When they came to a stop in the Charlie de I stepped forward and offered the king a chocolate. He refused, but a guard, a big dog by the name of Major Hal, was happy to oblige. The guard died because I personally had previously added poison to the chocolates. No, that can't be. I used poison derived from monkshood, a notoriously dangerous plant. As a flower seller, it was quite simple to acquire. Why did you do it, mademoiselle? Why, monsieur, people have tried to kill the king before, and people will try again. He is a vile man who has no respect for love for the people who suffer under him. I did it for the better of the French people. I don't believe that at all. Falcon, say something. Mademoiselle, are you being coerced or threatened? Speak freely. No, monsieur. I am confessing of my own volition. It is my guilt and no one else's. Intriguing, if that's pretty convincing. <gasps> well, defense, it looks like you wormed a confession out of this murderous pute. <laughs> ah, I suppose it gets your client Prince Juan completely off the hook. Why are we still calling Nothing him more. Prince Juan? We know he is not really a so, prince in his name, probably. Shall we wrap even this Juan. session up? <laughs> No, I gotta accuse you. I have not finished. I got further questions. Further questions? To what end? You've already proven your client's innocence. I wish to uncover the truth. You aren't here to uncover the truth. You're here to defend Prince Juan. Why does nobody know their jobs? <laughs> Nonetheless, I believe that Mademoiselle has admitted something of huge importance. Something of huge importance? I won't allow it. Fine. Can I at least show something to the witness? You and the prosecutor are a right pair of moralizing blowhards, aren't you? Fine, if it will shut you up, I will let you show one magical mystery item. I can't imagine you have anything up your sleeves that could change the flow of the court. Monsieur Falcon, save it. I have nothing more to say. Yeah, but the, the custom chocolates were from Judge Romulus. Does it ring any bells, mademoiselle? No, this man doesn't mean anything to me, afraid. I'm afraid. Heh, <sighs> useless. There was nothing up your sleeve. This trial's a farce. Guilty for sure. Oh. Wait, I know. I must have something. Mademoiselle, take a look at oh, this. I think it's probably the chocolate bar that you wanted to show. Oh, because... Because that's circumstantial. Well, then we got the green... Okay, this is the order I gotta do it in. Does it ring any bells, mademoiselle? No. This doesn't mean anything to me, I'm afraid. 
useless. I knew there was nothing up your sleeve. They're stalling. What about food? Oh, no. How, how does that not mean anything? Wait, I know. I must have something. Mademoiselle, take a look at this. Is it not the green pin? Yeah, that's that's the pen, but that would mean not, absolutely nothing. What do we have? We have Don Quixote, Paige. I've given the chocolate wrapper and I gave, I thought the receipt what's would... What's the box? What's the thing? What's what's that thing next to the chocolate? Well, that, that shouldn't mean anything. Not useful. I mean, I don't want to lose this case because I keep pushing. But it, it's kind of making me at this point. Uh, this is all I got. Does it ring any bells, mademoiselle? No, this doesn't mean anything to me, I'm afraid. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to do this. Okay, okay, fine. I've proven my client is innocent by tracking down the real murderer. But your honor... I'm afraid the judge is right there, JJ. It's a, obvious you want to exonerate this mademoiselle, and that's admirable, but it's also obvious you don't have evidence to support your claims right now. Let this go. The mademoiselle can defend herself in her own trial. That's you. So, we're in agreement, proper prosecutor. We're ready to wrap this up. We are. I have no further evidence for the defense of or for Mademoiselle Signet. Then I shall now converse with the jury to decide Prince Juan's verdict, although I suspect it won't take long. Don't worry, Mademoiselle. We'll get you out of this, won't we, Falcon? Sparrowson, you are clearly a caring individual, but this outcome is for the best. How, how the hell is this for the best? My parents are safe. That's all I wanted. Your parents? What about you? Well, the deliberation was straightforward. We find the defendant, Prince Juan Yerdo, to be cleared of all charges. Not guilty. Well, I mean, I guess he didn't do that thing, but he's still impostering as the Prince of Spain. How is that not a crime? Your Honor, what will happen to me? You? Well, you haven't been formally tried, but fortunately for you, we have a free trial slot this afternoon should be able to determine your guilt by nightfall. You may even see the blade of the guillotine by tomorrow. How lucky. Ah, <sighs> I see. You look scared, mademoiselle. Don't fret. They sharpen the guillotine blades regularly. Nobody here likes gallows. <laughs> Court is adjourned. I think this is goodbye. Thank you, Monsieur Falcon. Monsieur Sparrowson, you did your best. It can't end like this. <laughs> this is not how I wanted things to end, Senor Falcon. No, me neither. We mustn't blame ourselves. You made an admirable effort to save everyone. What good is effort if these are the results I produce? Tell me, Senor Falcon. Do you know why I hired you as my defense lawyer? Because I'm really good at getting killers off without, uh, <laughs> off with their crimes. I really don't. I hired you because I thought you were a lawyer with philosophy and ideal. And I stand by that. You are a man of strong ideal. It is just unrefined, like an unpolished gemstone. I am sure that given enough time, your ideal will become refined. And you will come to live up to your reputable family name. The Falcon name is reputable? I didn't know that. He's not talking about... Never mind. In any case, here is your payment. I don't deserve this. Keep it. I dragged you into it. It is only fair I compensate you for your time. I think that this is the last you will see of Prince Juan. Disappears in a bunch of smoke. <laughs> but feel free to come by r &M Associates if you ever need any future help, Senor Falcon. <laughs> Impressive, JJ. You actually managed to successfully defend your client. Severin, are you going to be in charge of prosecuting Mademoiselle Signier? Probably. Why? You think you can get her a reduced sentence? For attempting to murder the king? I empathize with the Mademoiselle, JJ, but I'm not a miracle worker. No lawyer can save the flower girl now. I'm gonna get a drink. Yeah, me too. Oh my god, we're gonna meet Quinnell again. 
All right. End of Act 2. On to Act 3. Do I remember the July Revolution? Of course. How could I ever forget? The chanting, the violence, the smell of gunpowder, the three glorious days. Kaka. Wait, there's flying birds. <laughs> what is that thing? A dinosaur. <laughs> That looks like a person. Maybe the revolution's what killed all the people, people. All right, Paris is burning. Is that the same revolution from Le Mis? Uh, I think. Actually, no, that was, yeah, the July revolution was the, was the Le Mis one. I can't believe he's skipping work again. I swear if I find that moping bird at Le Joyeux. Oh. Uh. Ah, finally. Good morning, Falcon. Morning, Sp uh. No, wait. It's two in the afternoon. That means the official greeting is, Where the hell have you been, lazy bones? Ah, uh, it's far too early for this level of roasting. <laughs> I don't want to be a roasted chicken. Pass the Cabernet Sauvignon. No way, we've got important business to discuss, and I can't do that if you're half drunk. What if I'm fully drunk? Mon Dieu, give me a break. I haven't had a good night's sleep since the trial. Something on your mind? Actually, yes. It's what that wolf judge said about a revolution. Pshaw, that guy is off his rocker. And besides, if we worried about every potential French revolution, we would never get any work done at all, am I right? It does tend to be an annual holiday for us. Maybe you're right. Worrying won't do us no good. Tell me about this important business you want to discuss. Oh, oh yeah, right, the business. A letter from the Paris Police Department. Fancy wax seal and everything. That is indeed a fancy seal. Well, go ahead, Sverison. You may have the honors. All right, ahem. Monsieur Falcon, meet me on the rooftop of the cafe opposite the Palace du Bastille. I have a proposal. Regards, Inspector Volerte. What's that pirate chicken want with us? How terse. A proposal from the inspector. Do you have any idea what sort of proposal he has? Not a clue. So, are we going to meet him and find out? May as well. Are you guys finally getting hitched? Oh my goodness, grab your coat. All right, no dilly-dallying, I like it. <gasps> but before I forget, I need to drop by the hospital at some point. I'm still very ill. <laughs> What'd you eat this time? No, no, it's not like that. Well, not entirely. I need to pay the bill. Oh, that's reasonable. Sure, we can pay a visit, but the inspector's call should take priority, I think. Or, you know, we don't have to pay that. A new day. What if we just don't pay it? Uh, it doesn't look like that's an opportunity. <laughs> Brr. It's far too cold to be meeting on the rooftop cafe. Why couldn't the inspector have chosen a comfier location? A comfier? A comfier. Well, who knows? Maybe the inspector likes the view because it reminds him of his days guarding the old Bastille under the ancient regime. Wait. You think that the inspector worked here during the ancient regime? Do you think he's how he got his old war wounds? It was a joke, Sparris, and I'm pretty sure the inspector isn't that old. Well, well, well. Severin, what are you doing here? You're the wrong rooster. Settle down, JJ. Just like you, I was invited here by the inspector. What could he want with all three of us? He wants to push us off this bridge. <laughs> it's hardly unusual for lawyers and the police of France to collaborate. The inspector probably has a big investigative role that requires all hands on deck. A big investigative role. Sounds juicy. Oh, by the way, did you hear what happened to Judge Romulus? No. What? Turns out he acquired his position as judge through illegal means, so a warrant has been put out for his arrest. He's a wanted... He's wanted. <laughs> he acquired the position through illegal means? What does that even mean? I think he ate a guy. I'm a little hazy on the details. Something about pushing another judge into the same. I can believe he did that. Anyway, I'm sure he'll be caught before long. Nobody manages to escape the long arm of the law forever. Speaking of which... Pirate. 
Oh, good. You're all here. Excuse me, Monsieur Mr. Inspector Volerte, sir. Falcon and I were wondering, did you get your injuries while defending the old Bastille prison? Uh, don't drag me into this, you fool. I was joking. You impotent whelps. I am not that old. I sustained these injuries in the July Revolution 18 years ago. I was a royal guard, just a lowly peon. Ah, the air was thick with gunpowder and blood. Oh great, now you've set them off. We were given the order to charge at the rebel barricade, my comrades. And I fastened our bayonets. Suddenly, boom. Without warning, the gunpowder keg exploded. My comrades were dead and I heavily wounded. When I looked up, I saw the looming figure standing between gargoyles of Notre Dame and Viridian Killer himself. Uh, this is a fascinating story, Inspector. Perhaps you could tell us why we're here. Oh, right. Of course. What am I to tell you about the remains of secrecy confidential? <laughs> what the uh, what? The yeah. <laughs> tell you, yeah. Uh, Sorry, is to remain Inspector Valerity is having brain damage on his <laughs> You understand. It's a matter of national security. As you've probably heard, France is under threat from a certain heinous group. Hipsters! <laughs> I'm not gonna throw the revolutionaries under the bus. I'm, I'm here. I'm a revolutionary. I'm playing Disco Elysium. Uh, hipsters. Hipsters. It's true. The other day I was called a pop-loving pleb for enjoying Chopin. Now's not the time for joking, you two. The inspector's obviously talking about the growing rumors of an uprising. Correct. A rebellion. Indeed, rebels. The storm is blowing in the shadows of Paris. Well, the Paris the police department have known about it for months, no years. In fact, the tavern on every street corner, people talk of organizing protests, overthrowing the government. The king has ordered the public gatherings to be dispersed and the newspapers to be censored, but the whispers of dissent remain. Now, 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 that seems a little bad on the part of the king. If you take away an angry citizen's ability to speak, they will just get angrier. Indeed. This is why the Paramount, we, uh, it's Paramount we, we find the strike at the heart of the rebel group as uh, soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> For that. Valente, why can you not speak English? I need your help. We are French. What exactly do you want us to do? Interview citizen scout locations, find the secret rebel meetings. Uh, location has escaped my eye, eyes of the bubble of the police. Do we have any leads? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> we know that the rebels are uh, having weapons supplied to them by a crooked merchant who is only referred to as the Crook Monsieur. Like the, uh, mm. like the sandwich? What? The Crook Monsieur, it's a hot sandwich, cheese, ham, a little bechamel, thrown on some pepper like a Friday night. It has nothing to do with sandwiches. Crook Monsieur is the al alias <laughs> of the accomplished and notorious dangerous arms dealer. <laughs> In any case, uh, that's the, everything the Parisians know. Everything? That's all you have to demonstrate after years of tracking? Naturally, as the public prosecutor, it's my duty to help the police with their investigative work. I would be honored to lend any and all assistance. Suck up. That's very good to hear, Caro, uh, Monsieur Corriokio, Corico. <laughs> but what about you, Falcon? Well, to be honest, Inspector, I don't quite understand why you're asking me. I'm here to defend the proletariat. I work for citizens who get stuck in legal trouble. Rebel hunting isn't my forte. You want to know why I'm asking you? Look around you, Falcon. We're surrounded by corruption and incompetence. The judges are bloodthirsty wolves, the jailers are thieving ravens, and the National Guard are sitting ducks. You know, you're not being euphemistic. Look at the slackers, the dullards, who supposedly protect and serve this country. 
Nobody cares about justice anymore. You saw my shameful display at the previous trials. Those are the results of a produce with imbeciles to assist me. <clears throat> but you three, uh, you care. Falcon, I saw you defending Dame Catalina and Prince Juan. I mean, Dame Catalina was unfortunately very guilty of being I a murderer. I heard you escapades around the city, the fanciful, fans, fran, fanatic, fran, <laughs> frantically collecting evidence and <laughs> interviewing uh, witnesses. <laughs> Frankly, you did more to investigate work uh, over the last month than I've seen any policeman do in a year. Yeah, I straight up told someone I was a cop. <laughs> Not including myself, of course. But Dame Catalina. It doesn't matter. You have a passion for conviction and uh, a passion and conviction. Uh, huh. My book, that makes you a fantastic investigator, even if that's not your job description. So what do you say? Do you want to sit around on your office twiddling your thumbs that you do have? Or do you want to take the opportunity to do something great and help us track down the animals who wish to do harm to our glorious nation? I mean... I don't want to hunt nobody down, but I do like pretending to be a cop <laughs> when I'm actually just a lawyer. I'd be honored to help my country. I mean, it's not like it's gonna let us do anything otherwise. <laughs> we have it's an illusion Ex of choice. Just, uh, just what I wanted to hear. There's nothing wrong with a little national pride. A little, though, not a lot. Uh, yeah, and, uh, pride is fine and all, but uh, do do we get any compensation for this? Of course. Here's your fifty francs. Oh my goodness, we are rich. And I'll follow with fifty more. Hush, Barrison. This is a great opportunity. I don't want to keep you any longer than necessary. Find the elusive croque monsieur. M -m -m monsieur. I uh, <laughs> find where the rebels are congregating. Those are two tasks. I will check on your progress in three weeks' time. I'll be doing my own independent investigation in the rebel group, JJ. I suppose this is a competition of sorts. Try to keep up with me. Don't make me laugh, Severin. I'll have all the rebel leaders behind bars before you even have your first suspect. As a defendant. <laughs> Come on, Sparrison. We have a croque majeure to hunt. Okay, let's go and do it. Do the thing. <laughs> I knew a little competition would kick those bird brains into gear. Well, Inspector, this has been a productive meeting. I should probably start my investigation into the croque majeure, too. Not so fast, Cocorico. There is something else we need to discuss. Oh, no. A new day, okay. I want you to kill J.J. Falcon. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to... Why wanna, did you do that? I didn't want to save and quit. Oh, no, load a previous day. We want to load. How many days into the... We are... We are here. Mm. Okay. We were, uh... We were the next day. Okay, a rooftop cafe. That's, uh... Wait, that, that was he requested a meeting. Yeah, yeah, this is the meeting. This is the meeting. Uh... Quit without saving. Load a previous day. You want to load... Here? Yes. Yes. I'm just trying to save our progress, just in case. Okay, we can go all over Paris. And down here, too. The, the salt petri salt petri tri, petri that's the doctor <laughs> do you think we even have close to enough money we got 154 francs that's pretty good to me but maybe we'll we'll save that to the end medical bills they don't accumulate interest uh we do the pont de Oz, la hall we could go we could go talk to mademoiselle signe assuming she's not already in jail mm. uh maybe we should go talk to Prince Juan and just see what he might know about things. But you know where they're probably hanging out? They're probably hanging out at the bar. They said they said that, you know, people hanging out at the bar talking about revolution. No, no drinking, bad falcon. Calm down, Sparrison. I'm just here for information. Taverns are the first place people go to moan about the government. 
Therefore, they are the perfect rebel ble breeding grounds. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> no, no. Oh, it's you! What will I uh, be today? Wine or beer? I'm afraid it's just questions from now, Madam Doubtfire. <laughs> We're looking for a man called Crook Monsieur. Have you seen him? Being a vampire says if he keeps drinking, Falcon's gonna turn into Coke Alvin. Uh huh. <laughs> um, no, that that name doesn't sound familiar to me at all. Okay, if you heard of any patrons bad mouthing the government? Of course, it's a tavern, hon. If uh, people couldn't come here to grope about the politics. To grope and talk politics? Who they groping? <laughs> That's true, but has anybody stood out? Well, well, just between you and me, the pair of drinking on the, the, the drinking floor has been acting very shiftily. Shiftily, shiftily. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say who they are, or they aren't rebels. Uh, but they're doing far too much talking and drinking and not enough drinking. If you know what I mean, I have a business to run. I think I do. All right. We'll see where business, to go. Business, business, business. <laughs> Is it working? <laughs> and that's when the Mademoiselle told me to put the order in. No idea where she's going to keep them, though. <laughs> Piero! You know she hates being called Madam as well. You're gonna get us stuck on guard duty again. Turning down the mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you are. The Madam it is then. Wait, she ain't married, is she? So why do we have to call her Madam? Why don't you ask her yourself? No way. She was trying to beat me alive if I asked that directly. Wait, hush up. Do you smell that? It smells like eavesdroppers. Can I help you, messieurs? I don't think we should be so direct. What were you talking about? What were you, what were you, what were you, what were you, what were you talking about? Um, well, I would like to include you on our conversation, but to be perfectly honest, I don't think that's much of your business. We want to be rebels. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it is our business. You see, we want to fight alongside the rebels. We, we do. Listen here, you. Hold on, Piero. Let me handle this. Listen, Monsieurs, I've seen you do around a couple times. We're acquaintances, I suppose. <laughs> now, I, I know who you are, but I do know that your line of work involves a fair amount of investigation. Therefore, I must assume that you're some sort of detective or prosecutor. Am I far off the market, Mark? Well? As I thought. Now... I don't claim to be part of the Secret Rebel Alliance. I've never heard of such a thing. But if I were a member of such a hypothetical group, I would not allow the entire entry of a manlin of the law like yourself, understood? Damn, that's a solid shutdown. Yeah, I'll try asking something else. <laughs> Bonjour, have you heard of a man called... Falcon, oh, wait! There's a slight chance these guys are rebels, right? So if we ask them to lie it or directly, it might scare them off. Good point. I'll try to keep it subtle. The croque majeure. Tell me everything. <laughs> Where'd you get that swanky hat? Bonjour. Where'd you get that swanky hat? Mm -hmm. This old thing? It's just a regular cap I bought it from. Oh, man. Somebody finally noticed how me awesome hat. I waited years for someone to notice it. Look at this thing. Who's the pretty Polly? I'm the prettiest Polly! Anyway, I bought it from a Mademoiselle La House. I think the shop is called Rue Odds and Ends or something. Fantastic. Thank you, Monsieur. Nice, Falcon. Now you can buy a swanky hat, too. But we're no closer to uncovering the mystery of the Croco Monsieur. All right. Where'd you get that rifle? Monsieur, I see you carrying a rifle. Evidently. Who manufactured it? Ah, good question. You see, most hunters around here are carrying old French Charles Veals. But the beauty is this is something special. You see, it's American. It's a Springfield Armory Model 1812 percussion locking fire mechanism. An American musket, you say? That is certainly quite special. It must have been hard to procure. 
It's true that you can't buy these guns of quality from standard street sellers, but if you know the right people... Go on. Well... Okay, listen carefully. You didn't hear it from me, but to me, the Crocomanteur... Huh. Actually, it would be foolish of me to explain this in public. It would be much easier if you just take this. The Book of Judges? What is this, some kind of law book? Or the Bible? The book subject is not important. Just take it. Oh, I see. It's the Book of Judges from the Bible. Old Testament stories about God smiting people. I appreciate the gift, monsieur, but I'm not religious. Nor am I. Wink, wink. Then, then why are you... Just, just take it, you idiot! Oh. Bible books are what we used to pass around in code phrases, don't we? Code phrases? Piero! Please! I'm trying to be low-key, and I can't do that if you're mouthing off with the big beak of yours. All right, right you are. Try to forget what my little friend said. Just... With a little searching? And with a little contents from the good book. You should be able to get what you desire. Is that a religious metaphor? No, Monsieur, I'm being very, very literal. <laughs> well, good judges, this has been added to your evidence. Well, thank you very much for that gift, Monsieur, <clears throat> but to be honest, I have no idea how this is supposed to lead me to our gun salesman. Ah, uh, well, you see, I hear that there's a... Excellent friar who performs uh, Bible readings, you know, at, at Notre Dame Cathedral. Perhaps if you were to slow show the man your new book, he would find uh, be able to find you a particularly um, spiritual passage. <clears throat> Are you sure that it is isn't a religious metaphor? I feel like you're trying to be a religious metaphor. I assure you, I'm as secular as they come, monsieur. Prior to the dumb, the dumb the tree. <laughs> dumb the tree. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm having an Adele Nazim moment. Uh, prior at the Notre Dame Cathedral. Thank you, monsieur. I'll make a note. Uh, what? No, that's Is there something that, else you that, wanted? Thank you for your assistance. We are going before you bust a vocal cord. You seem like two decent fellas. Ah, you shouldn't get involved in this rebellion business. Just do whatever you need with the Crocman here and get out of Paris. Oh, don't worry. We're already leaving the country for impersonating police officers. Okay, we can leave. <laughs> I don't need to play cards. We, we could... Well, are you ready to hit the road? We could make enough money to pay off the medical bill and maybe We've bribe. got plenty of money. I, I, we're going to get paid another 50 francs when I, we finish I think this. this is turning to the point where we have to start bribing people a little bit. Yeah. All right. You just want to go directly to the Notre Dame? That seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's the best lead we've got. We have a lead. We should follow it. Ah, the Notre Dame before it burned down. <laughs> Scaffolding lines, most of the crumbling outer wall, unperturbed, a handful of devotees are silently kneeled in thought. Devotees. Devotees. Here, for a little prayer, are we, Falcon? I had no idea you were the religious type. Sparison, keep up. We were told to come here I from the I wonder if rebels. they've got those later, buddy, uh, doves. I'm following up on Fontaine's lead. Do you think it's that hunched-over fella over there? I bet it's him. I bet. <laughs> It could be, but let's show some tact. Excuse me, Monsieur Fryer! Do you know what tact is, Sparison? I should probably know. Oh not no, actually... it's a wolf! Oh no, it's, it's a... His name is Remus! Welcome, <laughs> my brothers, welcome. All are welcome under the roof of the house of God. Ray Ray. Are you here to confess your sins? Or perhaps you wish to join in our services? Actually, Friar, we're here because... Falcon! Uh, That's uh, Friar. He looks eerily familiar. Just because he's a, f he's a wolf. <laughs> ah, it's now the, that, now that you it's the it, Prince of Spain. It's the Prince of Spain. <laughs> now that you mention it, he does look a little like the guy who delivers our post. What? No, that's not what I meant. And how how does he look anything like our postman? Am, am I going mad? Your friend appears to be upset. 
Don't mm -hmm. mind him. He's just in a huff because he thinks like he he looked like this judge we once met. Judge Romulus, I get that all the time. I'm his twin brother, you see. So if Romulus and Remus drank milk from a wolf. Oh, uh, Flyer, would you say you had a good relationship with the old brother Romulus? We were close, but as you may have heard, he got in trouble with the law recently. I haven't seen him in weeks. I see. I didn't mean to pry. You know, some of us all have brothers we don't talk about. It's no trouble, but tell me, why are you here, my new brothers? My religious brothers. Brothers in Christ. My brothers in Christ. <laughs> oh, right. Well, we have a couple of questions. We would, we would like to be your brothers in Christ. What's with the scaffolding? Let's just ease you into this. Uh, is this some sort of construction project? That's right. A little repair, a little renovation. It's no secret that the cathedral has seen better days. The Cult of Reason did a lot of damage back in the days of the revolution. I remember learning about the Cult of Reason. And... Well, you know, some things never change. This thing's always falling apart. Cult of Reason? The, relig the religion of Christianity? Hey, hey, Falcon. What's the difference between religion and a cult? Don't be rude, Sparrison. Oh, uh, don't worry, my brother. I understand how it is. In, in Paris. To a young person, all ideologies look like gobbledygook in different packaging, <laughs> don't they? My famous French word, gobbledygook. <laughs> Pretty much. Then maybe you'll come to learn the differences as you grow up. I promise some ideologies are worth following to the very end, like, like, like communism, wink, wink. But let's not talk about any more cults and ideologies. Do you want anything else? Well, we came all this way. We have something we would Speaking like to show of you. judges. <laughs> Ooh, we could turn this all upside down. <laughs> so the cops are looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> That would actually be hilarious. What a choice that would be. Okay. Could you look at this? We heard that you could give us uh, special passage readings. Ah, I see you have your own copy of the Book of Judges. You know, it's actually only like ten pages. I don't know why it's a literal book. I am also impressed by the binding on such a small I, passage. I think you will find chap the text is just really big. I think you will find chapter 15, verse 2 to be particularly it enlightening. It was difficult writing with those ink pens. This chapter follows the journey of Samson, the heroic judge with divine strength. He had really long hair, and then it got cut. <laughs> in, the part of the in this part of the scripture, Samson is confronted by the men who are angered by his notion of justice. Read the passage. Okay. Three thousand men of Judah went on top of the rock of Etem. They said to Samson, Knowest thou not the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And Samson said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. This all counts as your Sunday reading, by the way. Everybody here, good job. As, as, as they did unto me, so I have done unto them. A beautiful sentence, wouldn't you agree? And it is poetic. It's barbaric. It's poetic, a beautiful summation of justice, if you're into Hammurabi. You understand the passage. That's delightful to hear. Yes, Samson was a great judge. Not a judge of today who sits on a high chair and files paperwork, but an old judge. A holy judge. A shofet. Shofets were to be admired and feared. They made their own judgments and dispensed their own punishments. Oh, I'm starting to ramble, Lord. Right, let's get back to the point. The key word of the day is Etam. That is the name of the cave where Samson hid the Rock of Etam. Etam, got it. I'll make a note. It's like backwards mate. But I'm confused. What does that have to do with this key word? That's for you to learn on your own, my brothers. You appear to be intelligent. I'm sure of that. If you put your faith in the right people, you can uncover the truth. We'll see what we can do. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Perhaps you wish to make a confession. 
No, I'm not confessing nothing. I think we're done here. Thank you for your time, Friar. I find that most people confess on things they did not do. Or they refuse to confess on the things they did do, which is going to lead me to confessing that I accidentally let Dame Cataline get away with murder. Get in the way, get in the way. Or as they say in France, murder. <laughs> oh, exclamation point. Ooh, we got a, this is a, this the is The cocks. This is a cinematic we can only see now. So, what's the plan today? Play cards? We're flat out broke. Maybe. Let's see. Well, that's not what I wanted to click. Nobody's interested in conversation. Is it this, fellas? I mean, I might as well. We'll try to make a little bit of money to pay off Sparrison's medical debt. Yeah, it's, it's 21, right? It's blackjack. All right, it's time to start counting cards. Okay. Hit me. Not yet. We got to shuffle first. All right, hit me. Uh, one. Oh, we can do better than that. Eight. Okay. Oh, we're going to stand at 19. We, we got the spares, and they're not going to get us. They got to get 20 to win. Aha! Aha! You silly goose. I won five francs. Nah, I'm done. <laughs> I just take your money and leave. <laughs> you can't let me leave on a loss. Are we ready? Yeah, I guess so. I, 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 I kind of don't know we why. We didn't go to the drinking room. We did go to the drinking room. There was nobody in there. I clicked on this thing over here. I clicked on a, a cutscene, and it didn't play the cutscene. It took us to the all the way over here, like kind of joyo. I don't know. I must have had something wrong clicked. We must have missed it. That's... Oh, I see what happened. You clicked on the spot rather than on the oh, name. Oh, goodness. That's silly. I almost want to reload my save. But I don't know. It's all we're overwriting things, so we would be all messed up now. That that stinks. Uh, we could go see Prince Juan. <laughs> what What have we learned? Why would we go to see Baron Roguet? The Rock of Etam. The Rock of Etam. Where is the Rock of Etam? A cave. A cave. Well, we got, we got, we got plenty of days, right? We can explore. I mean, uh, the the this is kind of a cave, right? Jail? <laughs> well, I mean, unjust, just the palace of justice, cause it's a, uh... cause, cause it's the court. Maybe the librarian knows something about the Bible. That pompous ass. I don't know. If we're if we're researching things, maybe we should go to the library. Time to hit the books. Am I right? If you're looking for. Croque-monsieur recipes, I guess that would be a, in the cooking section. We aren't here for recipes, Ferris, and the librarian fellow seems pretty intelligent. If there's something we overlooked, he would know. He whispers. <laughs> would you mind lowering your voices? <laughs> You're disturbing me during my daily crossword. Nathan has now become Lord Voldemort. <laughs> Oh, I should have known. <laughs> it's the two Harlequins. It's good to see you too. I know a Harlequin. It's good to see you too, <laughs> Monsieur. We I know too. <laughs> Him and his wife. We have some questions. Of course you do. Fine, let's get this over with. <sighs> Harry Potter must... <laughs> Harry Potter must die. <laughs> do you know about an uprising? What can you tell us about that? An uprising? Could you be more specific? Like one right now. <laughs> A Paris uprising. You two can't be serious. You want me to talk about every rebellion, revolution, revolt that Paris has ever been through? We'd be here all night. What other uprising hasn't happened yet? A future uprising? I read in the newspapers, messieurs, the government tries to strangle out the media, but the truth shines through the grasps of censorship. The citizens' contempt for current leader is blatant. 
Uh, a future revolt is a real, real possibility. That's all I know. I see. Let's ask something else. Have you ever heard of the croque monsieur? A sandwich? Of course I've heard of it. No, I mean a person with that name. No, it doesn't ring any bells. I'm familiar with the Earl of Sandwich, if that helps. Wait. You can become an Earl of Food now? I'm in the wrong profession. Never mind. We'll I'm try in the something wrong profession. else. Well, you also wanted to be a museum robber. We're barking up the wrong tree. Um, I bid you a good day. <laughs> well, damn. Damn, damn, donkey, damn. All right. I think we should go to we should go talk to Mousy and the Fox fella because they're private investigators. Maybe they've been looking into this. I still don't know why he pretended to be the Prince of Spain. I gotta answer that question. <laughs> oh, I think we missed some key uh, aspects of that uh, entire ordeal. <laughs> Are you still gonna give him a Spanish accent? <laughs> oh, I don't think I would. Would you, would, you, would you just be, like, British now? Or am not? Let's see. <laughs> you strangely have not given... Well... Even any character's uh, British accents yet. I don't even know if I could do that. <laughs> well, well, this is most... Mo uh, God, Well, no. well, this is most unexpected. There you go. Monsieur Falcon, Monsieur Spelson... I believe this is the first time meet. A uh, meeting without disguises or pretenses, is it? Oh, but first things first. Mousy, would you kindly fetch our guests some tea? Oh, of course, Monsieur Bulbis, of course! Ah, yes, the soft-spoken mouse. <laughs> Monsieurs, would, what sort of tea would you like? Chamomile? Darjeeling, maybe? I need to wake up. <laughs> coffee? Some Darjeeling would be divine. Thank you, Mousy. You could have had coffee. Sure, Darjeeling sounds good on me, too. Okay, one pot of Darjeeling coming up. It's going to be really hard for me to carry that as a mouse, but it's fine. Let's get down to business. What is it that you two came here for? We have just a couple of questions. You heard about the croque majeure? And no, we're not talking about the sandwich, unfortunately. Ah, the croque monsieur. Are you referring to the black market salesman? The man who claims to be able to procure anything, no matter how illegal? Yes, that sounds exactly like the person I we're looking for. I don't even know what accent do, this do, is. Do you know him? Me personally, no, monsieur. I just know what the vile reputation. It's 1848 for, for the people asking in the chat. I see. Then do you have any idea how we can find him? Hmm. Meeting the croque monsieur face to face is not easy. The man doesn't make himself known to just anybody, after all. I know. I shall do a little investigative work on my own. Come back in three days, and I will tell you where and when you can meet the croque monsieur. Miss Barrison, we should have done this in the first place. We could have outsourced this work days ago. That's an enormous help. Thank you so much, Monsieur Volpez. Of course. There is a price. A price? It's just a small fee, a mere 30 francs. Hey, we saved your derriere eh? over that Prince Juan business. Is this any way to show your gratitude? Monsieur Volpes, you must understand that this is no personal errand. We are investigating on behalf of king and country. I'm sure your intents are noble, Monsieur Franklin, but I am running a business here. A fox has to eat something. Uh, 30 francs, and I guarantee I will find you the croque monsieur. That's my final offer. What do you say? You know what? Let's just throw money at this problem. But we've already done so much work on finding Croc Monsieur. Ah, uh, here you go, Monsieur. We're gonna find him before he does. Well, we'll see. It's not that expensive. We got plenty of money that we earned defending his ass. We only have 129. Apparently, we had 106, 159. Oh, we earned five from the blackjack game. We can go make thirty dollars at blackjack if we really need to. Rest assured. I expect nothing less. For thirty dollars, thank you, Monsieur Volpez. It's my pleasure. Any, uh, was there anything else you wanted to ask? Where's that tea that Mousy was getting? I have not been served my tea yet. Hello, Terry Clay. Welcome, Monsieur Volpez. Has you heard of any rumors of an uprising? Of course. 
These days, a man can't walk into a tavern without hearing angry men whispering about violence and whatnot. I dare say the Par that Paris may find itself in the midst of a yet another revolution before the end of winter. But what can you tell us about the dissenters specifically? Do you know where they are meeting? I'm afraid you only know what you can read in the papers, Monsieur. I know anti-government protests are meeting out in the open until the government clamped down on large public banquets. With the banquets gone, who knows where the dissenters went? I see. Perhaps I can assist you with something else? Where is that tea? <laughs> That's all. Have a pleasant day, Monsieur Volpez. As to you, Monsieur. The tea's ready, Monsieur Volpez. It's ready. I'm afraid you're too slow, Mousy. Oh, bother. <laughs> But I wanted my tea. I ordered a Darjeelin. You should have gone with the coffee. Well, I wouldn't have gotten that neither. Maybe he would have been, maybe the coffee would have been ready in time. You think the elephant is a... A suspect? A, a revolutionary? I mean, we already went to the bar twice. Uh, <laughs> we could go talk to the swan lake. We could go talk to people who are in the jail. I mean, that's where, that's where... I don't know why we would want to go talk to Baron Rorgay. He's a bourgeoisie kitty cat. What does he know about... Uh, he's also in jail, so the he's, only people left are poor people. Oh, yeah, like that uh, kleptomaniac housemaid he had. Yeah. We could go... She might know something about a revolution. Oh, and I bet the hipsters in the Pont des Arts have something to... <laughs> the newly built bridge. And then the Louvre, which is the artists, the scholars, historians, and the hipsters. That's where I would hide a rock of, of a tom. That's right. We're still looking for the rock of a tom. The rock of a tom, a cave in the Bible. I don't know. I, I mean, I just feel like going and talking to people who are in the jail, possibly Miss Signet. Might be, I mean, she worked for Judge, well, and also Mr. Romulus. Well, I guess he's gone missing. He hadn't been arrested yet. I bet that does not change the standing of people who've done illegal things. Well, uh, what well, my point is, is that Signe was working with Romulus, who was a revolutionary, so maybe she knows something. Maybe, oh, and she said her parents. He, he promised something about her parents. And she did say some mean things about the king. She did say some mean things about the king. I don't know. I guess it can't hurt. She's probably dead by now. We don't have a client to defend. I had a thought. If we want to find criminals, then we should probably talk to the person who deals with them every day. Ah, I get it. You're looking for Quark, the pesky jailer. I mean, I would like to just talk to the criminals directly. I don't want to go through Roz. Where is he? It could be his day off. Maybe we should come back another time. Your choice was poor. Well, fooey. We wasted a day. How am I supposed to know when he works? It was a Monday. Goodness. I want to go meet some hipsters? Would that be in the do in the palace, the Place de Louvre, or on the street of the Palace of Louvre? Yeah, you almost got murdered there. <laughs> oh, uh, this is this is the place I got uh, attempted murdered. I go talk to the Kingfisher again. <laughs> well, well, as if it isn't the rude lawyers. You know, you owe me, big guy. I, I owe you? Yep, my fishing line snapped when I dragged it out of the water the other day. I had to buy a new reel. So the way I see it, you owe me two francs for the fishing line, a million francs for saving your life. I don't have a million and two francs. Really? But you look so bourgeoisie. Bougie. All right, I'll tell you what. Two francs for the line and we'll call it even. Fine, you did save my life. Consider it a gift of gratitude for saving my life. Many thanks, monsieur. Now why are you here? Why are we here? All right, we have some questions. I'll start off light. How's the fishing? Small talk. You caught anything good? Today, not a kipper. He, I guess he's a bird. He's not a fish. He's a bird that's hunting for fish. Yes, he's a kingfisher. Do you think there's fish people? <laughs> fish people? This new <laughs> fishing line is really good, but I've run he out of good bait. He does have very peoply hands. So it's very... They all have people hands. That is quite an issue. So... If we were to offer you some bait, would you be able to lend us some line? Are you being metaphorical, uh, hey. like? I guess. Sparrison, why would you even ask that? We do not have use for fish and line. 
I'm just checking on the possibilities. You never know. We might need a fishing line in the future. Why would we ever need a fish? Oh, whatever. Don't answer that. You're being ridiculous, Sparrison. Maybe I can help you with something else. You ever heard of this black market mofo? <laughs> a man called the croc Monsieur. Nope, doesn't ring any bells. That's a strange name, though. Did the man name himself after the sandwich, or was the sandwich named after the man? I have absolutely no idea. I can only aspire to be on the level of having a sandwich named upon my name. The Sparrowson. Thick slices of white bread, mayonnaise, cheese, chicken, bacon, slices of sausage, honey glazed ham. Chicken? <laughs> chicken! Stop, you'll give us all hot chicken! <laughs> I am offended! Cocorico is even more so. Yeah, you wanna. You, we literally know a guy who is a chicken! <laughs> See, this is the nonsense that doesn't make sense in this world, Sparison. Hey, you know, I hate being called that. All right, how much time do we have? Can we run out of time? Shall we visit our R&M associates? Has it been three days? We No, it was, was it two, days? two or three. Uh, we got one more day before we go back there. Because uh... we went to the jail. We went to the Kingfisher. Let's not go to the doctor. Let's not go. We're still avoiding our medical debt. Uh, we don't need to go to the court. We went to the library. We went to the Notre Dame. I don't think we need to see Miss Chocolate again. Again, uh, we've been to the bar twice. Oh, we've been to there. That'll be tomorrow. Uh, so we could go see the the chateau again for some reason, or we could go to the Louvre, or we could go to the market. And the market is where that guy got that funny hat. I don't know if that's a lead in anything, but we might end up with a nice hat at the end of it. There is no clock on the hallways. There is. We could go there any time. Um, so it's really between the Louvre and the Chate, Chateau Crignier. You know, she owes us one because we didn't rat her out for being a kleptomaniac. We sort of did. I suppose. Ah, <gasps> oh, there she is. Ah, oh, it's you there. I remember you. You guys can help me out with this little dilemma. What is it, mademoiselle? Which country is better, Great Britain or the United States of America? Oh, no. In, in 1848. <laughs> Can I pick neither? <laughs> in, in 1848. One of them had a really big slavery problem in 1848, and I do not believe it was Great Britain. I mean, I don't believe their hands were clean of that, but the USA in 1848 was probably one of the worst years for the USA. It was not, it was, it was not a good time in history for the United States of America. I'm, you know, if I gotta shoot, if I gotta choose between sh being shot or being pushed off a balcony, I'm gonna say Great Britain. Putting aside all prejudices, the British Empire is, I suppose it'll continue to prosper for a few years, years to come. A few years. The USA is still a young nation. Anything could happen to it, preferably things that would make it better. <laughs> you think Britain is a safer option, huh? I suppose it would make for a shorter trip. Oh, you trying to flee the country. What is it is about, mademoiselle? Well, I am thinking of taking a long trip. Everywhere I go in Paris, people are angry and depressed. It is like violence is about to break out at any moment. I've saved up enough, so I'm going to get out of here. Follow my dream to starting a new life overseas. Why don't you just go to Italy or something? I don't know. Italy is not so bad. Well, I guess the Italian diaspora was not long after 1848, so you could get a couple years in and maybe it wouldn't be that bad. I don't think that there's a single good job in America, though. I do not think so. Uh, I do not think you need to be going to America right now. In 1848, I don't think you can find a good job there. I, I do not think you need to be going to America. I really, honestly, between America and Great Britain, just find any other country. Any uh, You got the whole map. You can choose anywhere in Europe. Have you considered just leaving Paris? Just, just leave Paris. Just go to maybe try, maybe try any other city in France. Maybe, maybe name name three cities in Can. France. Can maybe try going to Can. Name three cities in France. <laughs> Str 
Ralph's fur. <laughs> <laughs> we passed. We passed Strasbourg. I believe that might have been in Austria. <laughs> that is the question in, in terms of the history of Strasbourg. <laughs> All the Europeans in the chat are just like, oh, no. Oh, no. Listen, I've been to London. I've been to Venice. I've been to Rome. I've been to Florence. I've been to Munich. And I've been to Paris. Anything in between, I, I, can't, I can't be held accountable for. <laughs> well, the Baron's passing, they decided to auction off his estate. I think the Demoiselles are showing some interest oh, in the... Oh, God, he's been beheaded. I guess he was actually sent to the guillotine, Sparrison. That is not good. Uh, I do not like that on my conscience. So I guess they can handle the household duties themselves. He should have got better lawyers. The damn owls, you said. Interesting. He should have defended himself better. <laughs> anyway, this might be the last time we see each other. So I'll just like, uh, all of our Lieutenant Robinson, all of our Inspector Grivy Crystal, I still believe you are a policeman because you lied and I saw you being the lawyers in court, but... Uh, yes, um... <laughs> you know what? It doesn't matter at this point. Farewell, mademoiselle. I wish you a pleasant voyage. Bon voyage. Don't let those limeys push you around. Hey, Falcon, I think we forgot something. Mm hmm? The rebels, the croque monsieur, all the juicy investigation stuff. We're supposed to be asking questions. Oh, damn it. That completely slipped my mind. It's no matter. Colleen didn't seem the type to get involved with rebels and arms dealers. She probably knew nothing. I suppose. In any case, it seems to be the only one with enough sense to escape before the violence starts. Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay, we got one more. Oh, we could go back to... All right. You paid for... We paid 30 francs. You paid the service... Uh, I would like my tea this time. Monsieur Volpe, has you managed to dig up some good information I trust? There's good news and there's bad news. Let's see the good news. Let's, let's start. It's not good. Have you heard about the word of Jesus Christ? Oh, uh, no. That's the good news. <laughs> I've found a way that you can meet Croque Monsieur. He lurks around the Rue des Marmosets. On Friday evenings. The Rue de Marmosets? Oh, the Monkey Road by Notre Dame. That seems simple enough. So what's the bad news? The Croc Monsieur refuses to speak with anyone who he does not know a secret password. And I'm afraid I was unable to procure the particular password. <gasps> I bet it's password. a Tom. It's a Tom. It's a Tom. I see that is a problem. I apologize. I could not be more helpful. Oh, it's no problem at all, Major. You've given us a fantastic lead. Rude to Mama sets on Friday. I will be there. I believe we know what the password is, but I think we should. Uh, no, we... I thought we we do. Come on, Falcon. Don't be a bird brain. I shan't deny you two any longer. I'm delay. Shan't delay you two any longer. I'm sure you have a lot of investigative work to do. Yeah, we do. Thanks for your help, Monsieur Volvez and Mousy. Uh, you are also here, small mouse. All right, it is now Friday. It is February the 4th. Well, we timed that well, didn't we? All right, Rue to Marmosets. <laughs> Marmosets? We would have had oh, my God! We would have had to wait seven more days if we ah. had just done one day more. He's not a croquet. He's a croc. It must be. Excuse me, Monsieur. I don't recognize you fellas. What's the password? The password? Uh, it's Tom. Dagan. <laughs> oh, I took your fellas for bird brain cops, but you actually know the secret password. So what do you want? Well, let's start with introductions. You are the croque majeur, are you not? That's the croque majeur to you. Mon dieu. People always get the pronunciation wrong. <laughs> I'm not really hearing the difference. In any case, Monsieur Croc Monsieur, my name is... <laughs> Don't tell me, you idiot. Bringing up names can mess up an entire meeting. Why do you think I use an alias? Just tell me what you want. Drugs, guns, explosives, slaves. Come on, I don't have all day. Well, to be honest, what I really want is information. I know you've been supplying weapons to a rebel group. 
I want to know everything. Who they are, where they're meeting, what they bought from you. Ugh. If I sold out my customers, it wouldn't be good for my reputation now, would it? I suppose that's true. <laughs> Just kidding. Money beats integrity any day. Pay me 500 francs and I'll give you the dirt. 500 francs for information? That seems a little steep. Steep. This intel is probably worth 50,000 francs to the Parisian police. I'm giving you a bargain. Listen, you pay me the full 500 right now, and I'll tell you exactly what- I can't do Jason Statham, man. <laughs> it's just falling apart. I'm just picturing him in my head trying to do his voice. <laughs> Listen, you pay me for the 500 right now, and I'll tell you exactly when and where you can find the rebels. Do you take checks? I would have spelled it with a Q in, in this uh, economy. Uh, to be honest, I don't really have that kind of cash ready to hand over right now. It's quite all right. We can do installments. How does 50 francs a month at 10,000% APR sound? 10,000? Well, well, well. Santa Marde, it's the fuzz. Cheese it. Wait, wait, Monsieur Croc, Monsieur, come back. Never fear, Falcon. I'll tail the dastardly fellow. Don't get too close, Paris, and that crocodile's got a gun. <laughs> 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 What's all this ruckus? Playing cops and robbers, are we, JJ? Are you blind, Severin? That was the croc majeur. We are on the crux of extracting some vital information about the rebels, but your smug entrance just ruined everything. Huh? That was the croc majeur? I never would have guessed. You don't sound very concerned. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm quite impressed that you managed to track down such an elusive criminal. But I have something much more pressing that I need to discuss with you. More pressing than finding the rebels? Perhaps. JJ, I want you to answer this question. Sincerely and honestly. Did you go by a different name prior to enrolling at Paris Law School? What does that have to do with a rebel investigation, or with anything for that matter? I would appreciate it if you just answered the question, JJ. I need to hear it from your own beak. I'm not interested in sharing my dead name, Coco Rico. <laughs> that's none of your business. I don't think that's any of your damn business, Severin. Keep out of my personal history. Hmm, hostile defensiveness. The desperate strategy of a guilty man. I don't appreciate your accusatory tone. You sound just like Inspector Valerti, except less of a pirate and more of a prick. But that's it, isn't it? The inspector ordered you to dig up some dirt on me, didn't he? Answer me, Severin. What's going on? What did Inspector Valerti say? <sighs> Man, that croc can run. Yeah, they're really fast. They can... They can climb. They can really book it on land. I'm also fairly certain he's an alligator, not a crocodile. It appears you two were making solid progress with your investigation into the rebel group, so I'll be sure to let the inspector know. Where are you going? We haven't finished our discussion, Severin. We have. I learned what I came here to figure out. Good day, JJ. Good day, Sparrowson. What? What was that all about? It doesn't matter. Severin's just poking his beak where it doesn't belong. Heh. <laughs> Nosy. Lighter. So tell me about your little adventure, Sparrow. And you lost the croc majeur, I take it. Yeah. He looks like a stumpy reptile. <gasps> but he can run like a gazelle. I lost him It's no t in no time at all. I see. Well, with the croc majeur's lead gone, our investigation has reached a dead end. Not entirely. He did drop something during the chase. He dropped something? What exactly? Look at this gun I found! <laughs> I think you need to do more exercise, Sparrowson. Don't judge me. Ow. 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 Mon do what is it now? Muscle cramp? No, my foot's hurting. I think I got something in my shoe. My bird shoe. Well, grit your beak and bear it. This is around where you saw the crocodile drop something, right? Yeah, somewhere around here. Then let's put on an investigation hats and find whatever it is. We didn't go to the hall, so I don't have one. Well, we can look at the ground. 
Yeah. This, the thing that I dropped. It's a list. 40, 40 muskets, muskets, 20 pistols, gunpowder, 3,000 musket balls to be delivered to the sleeping city. This is an invoice, but I don't see any names on here given the contents and quantities. The goods are probably intended for the rebels, though. Excellent funds, Barrison. It was nothing. But the sleeping city, where could that be? Well, it's a city that sleeps a lot, so somewhere in Spain, I would guess. I'm pretty sure that the location is not a literal city. For one thing, we already know the city where the rebels are gathering. It's right here in Paris. The sleeping city is a code phrase, like a riddle. A riddle, hmm? Mm-hmm. 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 Well, well, I'm stumped. The human ain't getting any, us anywhere. We must find someone else who can solve it. We need a person who is knowledgeable about all manner of riddles and puzzles. I know it all, huh? Precisely. In the meantime, I'll file this away for safekeeping. I suppose we could go back to the private investigators and just pay them $30 and wait no, a bit. No, no, I think that the crossword puzzle donkey can do it. Oh, oh yes, our librarian friend with the whispers. Do you think Croc dropped anything else? Well, there's only one way to find out. There are a couple things here. There's some broccoli on the wall. <laughs> oh, I see some hanging bushels of onions. Bushels? That can't be right. It's sprigs. Sprigs of onions. How about bundles of onions? That's pretty neutral. Confederacies of onions. Oh, watch it now. It's 1848. Okay. Box of onions? We're done. Noah's Bar, all animals are welcome. Except mosquitoes. You bloodsuckers can go get your fix someplace else. Don't you hear that? <laughs> Noah feels pretty strongly about mosquitoes, huh? Are mosquitoes person size too? <laughs> I am concerned about the fact that Mousy is small. Is very small. Mouse is mouse size. You're the size of an elephant, roughly. In this world, I am. I'm not saying all mosquitoes are bloodsuckers, but. Whoa, Falcon, keep it classy. I'm just stating the facts. Uh, I've heard stuff like that before. An empty cart. Someone has scrabbled the word Descartes on it. The owner's name, perhaps? I think it's just a Descartes. The cart. The cart is the cart. Ah. This wall. Somebody this wall. thinks this funny. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this funny. <laughs> Does that street lamp look broken to you? Yep. I think that all the lamps on this street have been vandalized. The ground is covered in glass from broken panes. Maybe Mouse is, as being a vampire suggests, maybe Mouse is not small. He's just far away. <laughs> I think. <gasps> that explains why my foot is hurting. I've been walking on glass. Oh, no, that's not good. There's glass in the sole of my shoe. I must have trodden on some shards while chasing the croc monsieur. Do you think there's bloody footprints? Oh, no, my shoes. Well, I wouldn't say good. You paid 20 cents for them. <laughs> File this away in your evidence folder. You you want me to file away the broken glass? Yep. Filing an official formal complaint to the government. Their faulty street lamps have ruined my shoes and I am owed compensation. Well, we'll see if this comes back. Are you uh, satisfied? We have real evidence to find. I think we might be done here, though. I think they usually tell us when there's <laughs> nothing else to... Oh, look at that. This sign is difficult to read. The paint is faded. Tur. Trottle fruitier. Trick del, del fruitier. There's no way it says that. You just made those words up. All words are made up, Falcon. <sighs> More bushels of onions. There's no way that's a bushel. I think. I think we're done. We gotta hit the X. I think we're done here. Ah, those puns are disgusting. Okay. That's funny. So we got a few things. We got to make $500. Ooh. Oh, oh, click on the name. Not, not, click on the name. Not, not on the, okay. <laughs> Is this room to your liking, mademoiselle? Uh, this is Lion's wife? I don't know who Beaumort is. Oh, yeah, maybe she's a lioness. Maybe she's Beaumont Rorge. Yeah. You want me to do... You, yeah, do the lady lion. <laughs> don't call me that. 
Oh, my apologies, madame, but what are your thoughts? Is the room suitable? It's dark, Crampton. It's more than a little macabre, but I think it will do. Excellent. I have hired private security to guard the entrance 24 hours a day. Rest assured your weapons are safe. Tell me, friar, will I, uh, are we doing the, the right thing? Do you think Beaumont is a man? He's saying, but I, I don't know. <laughs> of course we are, madame. There cannot be change without bloodshed. No revolution without revolution. Surely you aren't having second thoughts. Of course not. I want nothing more than to serve justice to the corrupt rulers of this country. The ones that put my poor lion oh, guy... Oh, oh my oh. God, I've got a gun. I'll pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it is now 2 o'clock, Sparison. We have been going for a couple hours. I don't know if we... I think we got farther than we did the last time. I'm gonna. We hit. certainly got different. We we are February fifth on Saturday. We're gonna save and quit. Go to previous day. So yes, we are now farther than we were before. So this is where we're at. Oh, we're only five days away from finishing the camp. But that last day is probably court. So that would probably take. For whose court? I mean, I don't it's know. It's this case, but whose court? It's, who's 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 going to jail? I don't. I'm not sure, but uh. But I, w I think we'll end it here. Um, I do think if we do one more episode of this, we will probably get an ending. So maybe we maybe we will. We'll say if y'all want us to continue this well, and we finish. We definitely messed up at some point. We could have gotten into today if I'd remembered there was a third whole episode of this series back in the day. But I do feel like, gosh, it'd be really interesting to go back and look to see what godforsaken apparent voices we decided to give to people <laughs> back four years ago and see if we made the same jokes. <laughs> I think we did things very differently. I think I do not remember any of this. I have no memory of this place at all. I have no memory of crocodiles or... or, or we did not find a crocodile, I can guarantee you that. I, I have no memories of going to church or there being some friar. <laughs> Winter rises. I'm invested now. I need to see an ending. We, we ending. definitely should continue the story uh, before four years pass. Yes, we will not make... Four years, four years. I do not want to make you wait four more years to finish this story. We will We will probably do it at some point by the end of the year. The, maybe, maybe the we'll January 6th connection did not strike an importance last time we played this. That did not. I can tell you those jokes were definitely new. <laughs> <laughs> those... Those jokes were new this time. If there was nothing else new, those <laughs> definitely were. Um, all right. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we also, by maybe by the end of the month, maybe early July, we'll have an LJ Smallwood and Michael Smallwood untitled Goose Game stream at some point. Um, if he stops going to Denver. If he stops going places, going to the other side of the country, and I can get him in one place. Every time I want to talk to Michael Smallwood, he is on the Pacific Coast. And he lives 10 minutes away. <laughs> um, Temmie would like this done before four years, but we'll wait. <laughs> we only do this on election years. We only tend to do this on election years. This is, <laughs> if someone's not running for president, we do not play a very attorney. <laughs> we could also play the other chicken cop game, but that, that, that can wait. There is something called Chicken Police, which is a, a modern day noir chicken police game. However, they voice acted that game, and I did not like it. We could voice instead of them. We could mute the game and then just provide our own terrible voice acting. That is we also. We also have several games of uh... Danganronpa. We do have Danganronpa. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to suggest our courtroom dramas. Oh, but... we have all three Phoenix rights. Well, at least the ones that matter. <laughs> There's a new Phoenix right that's about Sherlock Holmes ish stuff i mean i don't know nothing about that <laughs> dongle roomba dongle roomba yeah we got all the dongle roomba games <laughs> <laughs> let me let me look at this list we've got we've got i cannot see through the uh the we've we've got dongle roomba 2 goodbye despair we've got dongle roomba trigger havoc trigger happy havoc <laughs> 
I can, I, uh, those are the only two. That's it. <laughs> I think there might be some on my library. I think we didn't have the libraries for I got tonight. Nancy Drew the Hunt in the Castle Malloy. <laughs> oh my goodness. I used to love those Nancy Drew games back in the day. I played all those Nancy Drew point and click PC games. You know, you can get a, a collection on Steam that's like 30 of them <laughs> for like $40 or something. What are we doing? I don't know. <laughs> I can make a whole Twitch channel that's just Nancy Drew games. <laughs> I found my niche, Sparrison. Just investi investigative Foghorn Leg. I will also voice Nancy Drew like Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> you could, you could do, uh, you could do Disco Elysium in Foghorn Leghorn. I could also do Disco Elysium in this voice. The narrator doesn't have a voice in that game. I am playing Disco Elysium right now. It is so nice. It's like IMAX Disco Elysium in the living room. <laughs> they don't know anything about our living room. Uh, well, so anyway, <laughs> uh, make sure to come back here on Twitch in two weeks, two weeks' time, noon and two weeks for the Octopunk Showcase. we got a lot of upfronts for the rest of the year showing the trailer for Live Screamers, big, big surprise announcement for something that I have not spoiled for anybody or anything. Uh, as well as some other announcements of stuff we've got coming up for the end of the year, preview Fallout Sanctuary, that sort of stuff. It's going to be really fun. That'll be the next time you see me, unless you are a Patreon subscriber. I'll be doing some YouTube $5 behind-the-scenes live, st live streams uh, for various things that I've got going on this month. So if you'd like to check those out before the showcase, you can join on Patreon at $5 uh, for the month. But, uh, yeah, that's it for us today. We will surely resume this at some point. I will let y'all know. And if not, I will see you uh, right here in two weeks for the Octopunk Showcase. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I don't know when you'll see me. He might show up. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, have, uh, have, a, have a great Happy day. Happy time zone. Happy time zone. Stay great. It's, I'm not used to doing that sign-off in this voice. It is not functioning. It is I, I say stay great. I say I said uh, stay great, hydrate, and have a happy time zone, y'all.